What was the process of acquiring ta Coats Between the World and Me? Was there a competition for that book? No, Did there wasn't. Did he come to you? Uh, I, I met ta when we were both much younger, um, and we had a conversation. We, his agent, uh, Gloria Loomis, who's a fantastic um, agent, a uh, long-time agent, uh, Gloria and I, uh, we're talking one day and she said, you should just meet this young writer I just started working with, ta Coates, who was at the time, I think, writing for The Village Voice. And we sat down and we talked and we really clicked. Um, and he had an idea that was not a very good idea for a book, but we kept talking. And we came up with an idea for his first book, which was called The Beautiful Struggle, um, which was a memoir of him and his father. Uh, and, uh, and then we published that, for, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, and, uh, and then over that time, from the time uh, the Beautiful Struggle came out, ta profile started to rise. He started uh, blogging for The Atlantic, and then he started writing for The Atlantic, and then the pieces, he, he developed like this enormous following, mostly through his blog. Um, and then he wrote The Case for Reparations, which was like a blockbuster piece of journalism. Um, and somewhere in there, he and I came up with this idea to do a book about the Civil War, which had become a subject of some fascination to him. Uh, like a collection of essays about the Civil War. Um, that book, and, and he never offered it to anyone else because he and I had a very close relationship at that point and we um, kind of came up with the idea together um, for the Civil War book. <laughs> the Civil War book never happened. Um, I'm not sure how much of it he ever even tried to write. Um, and, uh, and, we were, and we were kind of not sure what we were gonna do because he didn't seem like he wanted to write this book anymore. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then over the last couple of years, you know, starting from uh, like, you know, the last few years, starting with the Trayvon Martin case and then through, you know, what happened in Baltimore, what happened in uh, Ferguson, what happened in uh, Charleston, like there was one incident after another after another of young black people, what happened to Sandra Bland in Texas, being uh, victimized by police violence. and. He felt like he had to make some kind of response to that. And uh, he had a meeting with the president one time, when the president was having like some journalists in for a briefing, and he had a, something of a confrontation with the president um, in that conversation. Uh, not a confrontation, but they had a disagreement in that conversation. And when he left that meeting, he left the White House, he called me up and we started talking about the fire next time. And he uh, said, why don't people write books like that anymore? And uh, we decided we were just going to read it together, right? We were just going to read The Fire Next Time again. And he read it, and he was like, I want to write a book like this, a book you can sit down and read in one sitting, and that feels urgent and immediate, and, um, and that responds to the moment, you know, with that kind of passion, but also beauty. Like, The Fire Next Time is a beautifully written book. Um, and he went through several drafts before we got to something that was worthy of that. And at some point we, we decided that it would be written as in an epistolary way, like as a letter to his son, which I think is the thing that really transformed it. Um, and, uh, and then we, we eventually got to, and I say we, he got to the book with my minor assistance. <laughs>